Alright, so welcome back to the train wreck of my life. <laughs> Guest starring me. Right? Guest starring roommate Matt Paul, who was there for all of this. And finally, I'm going to, we're going to be telling you the story of what happened. You know, in this one, it's going to be a three-part story, three videos. This first episode, we're basically telling you the story of how... I lost the house in the first place, like what happened. So, it's a long story, like I've been saying, when I've been excusing not telling it to you. So, let's just get started. Let's do it. Alright, so, let's see. What did you already know? You all already knew from previous vlogs that, um, so just a refresher, um, we had the house in forbearance, which was because of the pandemic. When the pandemic hit and I was a Lyft driver, um, my car broke down, I didn't have any money, like it was, it was a nightmare. So um, my sister and I worked with the original mortgage company to, you know, work something out. We put it in forbearance to where all the mortgage payments for a certain amount of time did not have to be made because it was all being tacked on to the end of the contract, basically. It was just meaning I was going to have to pay on the house longer. So that was all good. Everything was fine. Got my car fixed. Um, got back to work. And, you know, it broke down a couple more times. I went through a process there. So, um... That was the original thing. There was no, we were not going to lose the house. It was just going to take a little longer to pay it off. Um, so then, I'm just trying to remember what's already been covered in the vlogs um, to consolidate. Because we got to you moving in. Um, so, they sold it. The mortgage company sold the mortgage to another company. And they did not want to honor the forbearance agreement. And they wanted like thirty or forty thousand dollars. Like by it's yeah. It was like a like, month's time after the reception of the letter. Right. They said get current or yeah, face get the current or get out and it's our house, basically. Right. Um and there was no way in hell that I could come up with 40 grand in a month, 30, 40 grand, whatever it was to start with. Right. I mean, because this gets interesting. It did, the, the amount did keep increasing. Um, so like, didn't know what to do, but that's when, as you've seen in my earlier vlogs this year, I got a new job that was more steady than Lyft. I got a roommate. Um, and so I was able to call the people who owned the mortgage now and tell them I've got all these things like we're good and then they started the process of well they were supposed to we're getting there yeah we're getting there like they said that we could um, or I my sister and I who had inherited the house from our mother could go through the assumption process and then once we've done that then they would renegotiate the forbearance deal. Right, because we discovered this because we tried to make a mortgage payment. Right, oh, well, we haven't got, like, yeah, like, that's how we discovered uh, Well, that's how assumption. we discovered because they said it's not your house. You can't make a mortgage payment on this. That's it's right. Not your house. That's right. He moves in and we can't pay the mortgage because they just would not allow it. Right. Um, and that's when we learned of the assumption process, uh -huh. which nobody had told us about at all right to this nobody. point in the original letter it wasn't it, and that was so strange to me too because if i'm not mistaken that original letter was addressed to all of you it was addressed to judy clark glenn clark and valerie clark i don't remember it may have just been to you but it would have been me and my sister at right least. it should have been these but then they're telling us it's not your house right you have not assumed the house yet mm -hmm. So go on. Yeah. Right. We tried to make a mortgage payment and then we 
begin the process of assumption. Right, which was supposed to be, you know, fine. Like, oh, and so then my, uh, my sister didn't want to uh, take that on. So what they needed from her was a letter of... Uh, quick claim. A quick claim deed. Is that what it's called? It's a relinquishment of your of your claim to a property. Right. Is what it is. It is saying, I no longer want this. I'm signing, sealing, and sending uh -huh. my my claim that I no longer want this property. Right. Just wash your hands of it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, okay, so we're back. We had some technical difficulties. Apparently the camera was full. Like, we went on and told a lot more, but we're going to have to tell it all again. Yeah. So, such is life. Such is life. So, I think... Refer to the beginning of this video. <laughs> right, refer to the beginning of this video, and then I think it cut, I cut off where we were talking about um, my sister signing the quick claim deed. Um, so, what happened next? Next... Okay. Did we get into the assumption process? That that is the assumption process where she didn't want to, so she signs a quick claim deed, and then they're going to email us uh, a packet for Matt and I to fill out, um, and I'm trying to remember what we. Oh well. I mean, if there's something I actually we accidentally leave out because we already said it, I'll just put it in. I'll just edit it in in words. Um, so right. So we have the assumption process moving forward, and you know, so we think. Right. So pretty much all of May when I moved in there was run around. Yeah, they, it was run around. It was start the assumption process, and they won't get foreclosed oh, on. Right, they weren't like as long as we kept the foreclosure or foreclosure. As long as we kept the assumption process moving forward, then we, we would, would not, not face foreclosure. Right. As long and then, but and that's assuming that's assuming we can assume he can assume the house. Right. Assume the loan, basically, or right. whatever. Like, and. Uh, so, good, we're good, like, Matt's moving in, got a new job, got, you know, we have another roommate lined up, I told them that, that, you know, in January we'll have another roommate moving in, so we're able to pay, we just can't pay 40 grand all up front, and so they were going to work with us to go back into forbearance, like, all the stuff they wanted, they were going to put at the end of the agreement, so I'd just be paying longer, um, as long as we keep moving forward with them on this process, they are not going to foreclose. That's what they said. Um, so, they were going to email us the packets. Yep. They never emailed us the packets. So I had to call them. And every time I called them... No, no, they were going to mail us the packets. Oh, they were going to mail it. Mail Did I packets. say email? You said email. See, I'm getting at... I'm back to where we'd already left off. Sorry. So they were going to do snail mail. This packet that Matt and I were supposed to fill out. Five to ten business days. Yeah, and he, he wasn't assuming the house, but he counted as part of my income. He was the household income. And so that's why he had to fill out these forms as well. Um, and so, yeah, so we're moving forward, I thought, but they never sent it in the snail mail. And so I called them, and every time I called them, I had to start from scratch. Because they always started off, oh, well, uh, what was your name? We're not authorized to speak to you about, about the house. They, and I'm like, yes, you can. But I think they were only authorized to speak to my sister. And I don't know, you know, that's... And so, like, I did go through a whole process of proving who I was, proving we had to send... Well, that's one thing they kept asking for was my mother's death certificate. Because... My sister and I inherited the house from my mother, but, and so we sent in the um, death certificate, and they always said we hadn't, whenever I got on the phone, oh, well, you're going to need to uh, send in your mother's death certificate and do all this stuff so we can know that we can talk to you, and I always had to go, just run around, man. They always found it when I made them look for it. They're like, oh, we do have that 
sent in on, because I would tell them what date, because I was keeping meticulous notes. Who I talked to, what day I talked to them, what we talked about, what they told me. Um, and that's how they weren't able to just, you know, make me do all the same stuff over and over, because they had to go look for it. I had, I had the receipts. But it got ridiculous because it was every time I called them, I'm talking to a new person. I had a point of contact who was supposed to be um, in charge of this case. Never spoke to her once. I tried, I called, I left messages. It, she never called me back. Anytime I got anyone on the phone, it was someone new, one of her minions. And uh, they never knew anything at all. And I always had to start from the beginning. But... Anyway, so I called, said they never sent the packet. Dude says, okay, I don't know why we didn't send the packet. We'll send you another one. You know, five, however long. Five, ten business days. Yeah. No mail. No mail. And so then I called again to say we have not received the packet. Basically, we're having to wait a week at a time. At, at least. Yeah, at least a week at a time. At least a week at a time. And meanwhile... You know, we're aware that they told us that no foreclosure would be upon us as long as we kept the process moving forward. Uh -huh. However, the process was taking weeks just to get a packet. Yeah, just to even officially get it started, you know? Like, right. And I mean, so, was, meanwhile, we have a posted foreclosure date that we're being told not to worry about. Yeah, that's not a real date. That's not, not a real worry date. Don't it. worry about that. It's going to be fine. Because... You know, the original letter said that you have until this date, and then we will move forward with foreclosure. Right. And then we got a foreclosure thing that says you have not, you're still in default, and now you have until this date, and then that's when we're learning about the, well, we had been learning about the, the assumption process. And so we're being told by these people, don't worry about the, what the letter says. You've begun the assumption process. Foreclosure will not proceed. Right. But meanwhile, it's still, the date that we're told not to worry about is still approaching. Right. But while we we're waiting on a packet. Yeah. And packet doesn't get there, so it's nerve-wracking. But, you know, I'm sitting there feeling comforted. You know, you look at my earlier vlogs from this year, you know, and I was relieved. I was so happy. Like, everything was going to be okay. New job, roommate. We're going through the assumption process. Everything is golden. But, uh, so the third time I had to talk to them about the fact that they had not sent us this packet, that's when the dude was a jerk on the phone. You know, once I, again, I had to go through the whole, yes, you have authorization to talk to me. No yes, mom. you have my mom's death certificate. Yes, you have the quick claim deed from my sister. And then, you know, they had to find it and then talk to me. But this dude uh, was a bit of a jackass. And uh, he's the one who, I mean, you told that story the first time you recorded yeah. it. You wanted to yeah, do it no, again. He, uh, <laughs> no, because he, he was a bit of a jackass the whole time, um, from what I was told, because whenever he heard about us waiting weeks and weeks to receive two separate mailings of this particular assumption right. packet, he talks to Glenn like he's some sort of idiot saying, well, why didn't you just download the, the packet from the, the internet? Yeah, you could just look it up on the internet. Yeah, apparently, you know, the assumption process packet is just a, a blanket packet. It, mm -hmm. We were told by this company that we are mailing you this packet to fill out for us. Right. So we are assuming that this packet is from this company. Right. And it's, it's not their like we packet. do this every day. Right. You know? We don't it's do this. Like... <laughs> yeah, he's talking to Glenn like like he should have been he should have already done 30 assumption processes at this point. <laughs> right. He should know the process by now. This is and, my 20th house. Right. And this is my 20th assumption of a, of a relative's uh, <laughs> right. estate. Right. I inherit houses all, all the, the time. time. <laughs> and uh, so he's talking to him like he's a jackass and saying, well, why didn't you just download it? And, well, we didn't know. 
Yeah, we didn't know we could. We didn't know we could. We, it sounded very much, because when they, they say we're specifically sending you this specific packet to fill out, there's no... But you could just find it on the internet. No, right. that was never mentioned. Right. And that became a running theme with these people, was that thereafter, every time I called them, there was something new that they didn't know why I hadn't done it, when they hadn't told me. And I always ask, so that's everything you need, that's all we've got to do, and we're good? Yep. Yeah, everything, yep. this everything's is it. Everything's fine, yep, you're on the right track. And I was like, oh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? So, like, then this guy, this is the best part, is at the end of the phone call, he said, uh, oh, I can just email it to you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Please. why did they do that two and a half weeks ago? Right. And... So he emails us. And it was longer. It had been longer than two and a half yeah. weeks, I think. Like just the whole back and forth. Back and forth. Because there were a lot of times when I couldn't get someone on the phone. Right. Um, and you know, my point of contact never answered the phone or called me back. So. But so then we do get the forms. Jack asks. Right. He through. emails them. And emails them. With an email them. to send them to, which right. is the email of my point of contact who has not spoken to me. Right, and so that comes into play. Yeah. Because we fill out the forms, we get them scanned in, the next scanned in and sent the following day. Uh-huh. Because because that guy also said, Yeah, we have to get this assumption process started, your foreclosure date's coming up. No, no, that was a different guy. That was a different that was, guy. Because that's okay, that's what I did. I called to make sure they had received the the forms that we right. sent in. And right. I to make sure everything sent is sent it good. to your point of contact. Cause, Cause I never heard back from her after I emailed her the stuff. Right. She never replied, big surprise. And um, so I called, of course couldn't get her on the phone. Another one of her minions that, no, the first time is when I got the person who just wouldn't find any of the files and just said, oh, we aren't authorized to speak to you, I'm sorry. And so it, it took me a couple of times to even get somebody on the phone who would talk to me, get them to look up the things to show that they can talk to me. But this guy, like, the, early in the conversation, he was like, okay, yeah, okay, I've got all your stuff here. I see that your foreclosure date is whatever. But I'm like, wait, what? Because it was a different date. It was like the end of July. Because it kept moving. When mm -hmm. I first moved in, the first letter said the end of May. Second letter said that it, it was going to be the end of June, and then now finally we're into July where we've done our damnedest right. to start the assumption process that we've been trying to start since May. Uh huh. And and then this guy just casually tells us that our uh, foreclosure date is in two and a half weeks from right. where we were, from when when that phone call took place. Right. And, and I was like. What? what? We aren't supposed to have a foreclosure. We're going right. through the assumption process. And then he says, oh, well, it's because you didn't make any contact with us in May. And so, and I'm like, what the hell do you mean? We, like, I was nicer on the phone. In my head, I was very diplomatic on the phone, I think. I mean, you were in there. Some You were at work in the next room, like in the entryway you had your desk set up so yeah. you overheard some of my phone calls a little but like um yeah so he said it was because we didn't make any contact in may and i'm like yes we did and you know because the previous lady when she had looked finally found the quick claim deed told me the date that they had received it and i wrote that down it was in may yeah in case you were wondering Plus, I had called them May in 9th. May. And May May 12th. Yeah. You know, May, like, just... I had all the dates written down, yeah. and I told him who I spoke to on what date. And I'm like, so if you are going to foreclose on us because my sister and I, my sister who has long since washed her hands of this, didn't make contact in May, you can't foreclose on us. And that's when he dropped the bomb that... Well, since we have already started the foreclosure, like, we've already got it done, like, you know, it's coming, we can't stop it now. And I'm like, I don't understand why you can't stop it, since they're the ones who since messed up. You're the ones that are setting it. Yeah, they said it, 
they should be in full control of this, and they're the ones who dropped the ball. Not me. I had definitely made contact. I was in continuous contact with these people. Um, and so, okay, so what happened then? Um, so then we find out we gotta. He's gonna, he's gonna try to. No, he said he was gonna try to fast track it. That's right. He said, I'm, well, I'm gonna do my That's best to right. fast track it. Fast track it. And at this point, hope is, hope is running thin. Oh, because, like, when the other thing is, like, it turns out the reason I hadn't heard back about sending in those forms is because the email that Jackass had given me, the, the lady, the, the point of contact that I had who won't speak to me, uh, she's not allowed to open emails with attachments like that. We're supposed to send She's it to a different email. Yeah, there was somewhere else we were supposed to have sent it. They didn't give us that email address previously, but he gave it to me this time, and that's when he was like, we'll try to fast track it and get you assumed, yeah. get the assumption process done. But it usually takes about two and a half to four weeks, like to like two to four long, weeks. Yeah, it's a long process. And we yeah. had two and a half weeks to the foreclosure yeah. date. Oh, oh. And so, so then it's like we're yeah, pretty much. Yeah, at that point, I'm trying to remember when the decision was made. Three days, three three days before you made the decision because you couldn't get a hold of these people anymore. And every time I did, they had to do the whole process again. Yeah, like they would they would lose something. Oh, because we had to send in the forms again. I think. Again, we because they lost them. Right. Somehow. There was some, yeah. Uh, and so that's when we made the decision, or I did, because it's like, okay, we filled out the forms again, but you know what? They're not going to let me keep the house. Right. Like, they're, they're going to screw this up, because that's been every single time we talked to them. There was something that they hadn't told us, and... I was just like, we have days. If I don't sell this house, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna get nothing out of it. I'm gonna lose everything. So we had to fast sell the house. And uh, like my dad had a real estate friend who came and looked at the house. Like, because I called him, and I'm like, I'm still waiting. I'm still hoping that he, the dude, fast tracks this and we keep the house. But I'm at this point. They've had 80 days. To that point, mm. to to do anything, yeah. and they've done literally nothing. Nothing, not one thing. And now, so being... why would I think in three or four days they're gonna actually get this done? Right. So I'm like, it's a gamble, you know, because you I could, could sell the house. house. I could sell it for the full market value, and that's what we we're trying to do. Uh, so our real estate agent friend came by, looked at the house, told us how much it was worth. Um, and that he thought he could, he had some investors that if I decided to sell the house, he could really quick get us the full value of the house. Um, or as close to it as possible. As close as possible, yeah. Um, so I'm stressed out, I'm, I've got options, but the date is fast approaching that we're going to be foreclosed on. And um, so then I get a call from our real estate friend, and uh, he he has to sadly let me know that you know one of his uh, investor friends wasn't really interested. He had too many other things going on. He didn't want to buy another house, and then he didn't have time. Like too many people were out of town. He's like, I don't, I can't do this in four days. Yeah, I can't do it that fast. So he gave me uh, another contact to talk to. Um, Gosh, I can't think of the name of them. I still need to write a good review for them because they did. They did the best they could for they you. They did the best they could for me. Yeah, so did Billy. Like he did the best he could, and given the circumstances, it's right. ridiculous. Like he was very helpful. He sent me to these people. They were very helpful, but there, there's no way they're going to pay us the full market value because that's their business model. Well, and also you know, they, they had to pull strings for us. Too. Yeah, though they did, and they because to, we had to get the foreclosure date postponed. Right, there was they had to go to court. They went to court to get a judge to put a stay on the foreclosure. 
Mm -hmm. And they and they did that in a matter of two days. Right. It was magnificent. I because, guess. Like, because they because foreclosures in Dallas County happen. Foreclosure auctions happen on the second of each the, the first Tuesday of each month is what it is. Mm -hmm. So our foreclosure date was set for the 29th and then the house would be sold August 2nd. Mm -hmm. is, is what it like came down. No, no, the 29th, well, the 29th was that Tuesday. And they we determined on like that Thursday that it's time to fast sell. Yeah, there's no there's, there's no, no way they're going to work. They're not going to get they're this not going to get this done. The weekend's so coming we up. They're going to go. Them. They're going to go party. They're going to have a good time. And, and you know, we're going to be homeless. And we're going to be homeless with no money. Like with with, with nothing to show. Nothing. For. Nothing to start over with. If right. if they just take the house, yep. so we have and to choose to sell it. And you can never get another home. Uh-uh. No. Exactly. On, you can't get another home loan for about 20 years. Right. And, and so I didn't want that. So that's that's why I decided to sell it to these people. And, and we I, almost got screwed again because the the judge decided to take Friday off. Right. They were going to go to court Friday and oh, the judge man. decided to take that day off. Yeah. We told them Thursday, do it. Pull the trigger, do it. Get, get us the stay. Get, yeah. as, get as much time as yeah. you need to buy the house from us. Yeah, and they basically had to get a restraining order against this company. Exactly. And they couldn't get in touch with this company, imagine that. Like, right. they tracked down who owned it. She was a lawyer, and, you know, the dude's like, this lady is just, she makes a business out of stealing houses from people. Right. Is what, And they've been sued multiple times for, like, this is a bad company that my mortgage company sold my mortgage to so um yeah so then they had to go they're like we're gonna go in in the morning and race to get in because that's also the day that this company was going in at one o'clock in the afternoon they were going into court to foreclose on my house yep. so it was that close it was hours away from losing everything I can't even articulate how stressed out and insane I was going <laughs> at this point and still having to go through all of this. Um, but, yeah, but they did it. Like, because I was on the phone with them at work. Like, it was so stressful. New job, and I'm constantly having to be on the phone with real estate people and lawyers. And they got yeah, it. They got, the, they got the restraining order, so they couldn't foreclose which bought us a little time, but we can't save the house because they only did it because we agreed to sell it to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, wound up getting way less than it was worth. Um, but it was something, it was enough to start over. I mean, it was still more money than I've ever had in the bank. Um, but yeah, so they sent somebody to where I work, a uh, freaking notary because I had to sign sign away the house for X amount of money. Um, and so that was done. The house was gone. I mean, it wasn't good. We were still in it. Like, we had until, time. yeah, the end they of gave the us month. time. They yeah. gave us a couple of weeks, I think. Right. In order to, like, there was, they gave us the payment, and there was another five grand if we got out on time, that we'd get another $5,000. So we had to be out by a deadline. And so then, I mean, that pretty much... That's how we lost the house. That's how we lost the house. It's to be continued because the next, the next part is we didn't have anywhere to go. We had nowhere <laughs> to go. It's like, okay, got money. But we now have we know to go. Home. Yeah, now we have to get out of the house and where are we going? And not only get out of the house, but it wasn't no rent house. Right. That was a family home. Yeah. Which oh. meant which meant which meant a huge lot. move. And really I only had weekends. We only had weekends, yeah. And so really it came down, I remember thinking, so really we only have four days to move out of the house. When you just look at the weekends <laughs> Yeah. To find a place to live and move out of the house and get everything packed up 
Oh my god, I was stressed out of, out. Out of a house that's, that had two, two estates in it. Yeah, right. Because it's like all of my mother's worldly possessions, all of my father's worldly possessions. It's all of your worldly all possessions. All of mine, which is nothing compared to theirs. Compared to theirs. Um, but that is the next episode. Yeah, that's the next episode. So, hope you'll, hope you'll come back for that. Um, yeah, basically, just to summarize the whole thing. <laughs> One company just royally screwed us for three months, and then we lost it. Yeah. And they gave us the runaround, and they deserve all the hell this world has to offer. Yes, they do. Um, because they, in the first letter, you know, you know what that thing says? That says, the, the letter says, by state law, they are required to work with you. Mm -hmm. They are required to work with you because you know what the state hates and the federal government hates more than anything? Foreclosures. Because that foreclosure kills economy. Foreclosure, whenever houses sell for way less than they're worth right. to massive corporations, the economy loses. And yeah. so there is, a, there is a number of laws that say that they are supposed to work with you. Hence the forbearance. Uh huh. Hence right. the forbearance. Because they do not want homeless people. They right. do not want the economy to tank from foreclosures. Look at 2008 and 2009. Mm -hmm. They do not want the housing market to crash. Which right. is what foreclosures contribute to. And there was a big stipulation in that letter that says they are, they are required by law to work with you. And this particular company's idea of working with you was giving you the runaround. Giving you the runaround until they they arranged for you to fail. They did the bare minimum to say we tried. Right. But the absolute bare minimum to say that they tried. But then they come across somebody like Glenn who actually keeps receipts of all the conversations <laughs> right. the people he notes. talked to on the date he did it and what was told to him. Followed up with what he was told to do. And, yeah, the best they could do was say, oh, well, you didn't make contact with, with us in May, which I did. And, and they, my sister They did. never had an intention. No intention. They, they never us. had an intention. And so when we were told that they would try to fast track, that was pretty much them telling us we are going to do nothing. Right. And, yeah, it was just like, please don't fast sell the house. We want to steal it from you. Mm -hmm. Keep waiting. We're going to work with you. We're going to fast track this house. Because the this first guy assumption in process. May said that we've got to fast track this because he, I don't know, it was one of the first guys, one of the first, you know, 11 or 12 people Glenn and I talked to <laughs> did say that the assumption process is somewhat of a lengthy process. Right. It can take up to, and up to two months is what he said. He mm -hmm. said it takes about a month to two months to fully assume an estate. Right. And so he says we've got to fast track this. We can only hold off foreclosure for so long, and we've got to fast track this. And we're like, yeah. okay, let's do it. Yeah, and so then this guy's going to tell us that we're going to fast track it in four days. Yeah. No. Not happening. No. So time to sell. That's why it's like you can have very little of what the house is worth, or you can have nothing. So give me the little. Give me the very little, and let's move on. And very little was still more money than I ever had at once. Very so, little was still substantial. But it was very little compared to the full value of the house. And not just the you know, and not just the monetary value of the house either. Oh yeah, right. Not like, just the monetary value. Like the emotional stuff. We'll get into the emotional stuff in the next video. I think that's inevitable. Because I completely went insane <laughs> during the move from hell. Yeah, like so. after that point. So that'll be the next video. Um, Finding a place to live in the move from hell. Right. So, uh... The witch in the wardrobe. Yeah. So if you want to keep following my story, I love you for it. Subscribe, like this video, share this video. Um, if you want to stalk me on the internet, check out my novels. You can go to glenslateclarkjr.com where there are links to all my novels where you can buy them and to the podcast that Matt and I do, Autodidactica. Yep. Um, and yeah, we'll be back in the next episode with part two, trying to move out and find some place to land.